In this video, I will show you how to go from this to this with this. So first things first, I'm not implying that there's anything wrong with the seagulls. Seagulls pick up and preamp, quite the opposite. It's because it's such a good base to work from that you can just add spice to it and make it come even more alive than it already is. To make this demo easier, I pre-recorded a loop, the one you've heard in the intro, and I recorded it into the Impero using its built-in looper capabilities, and I'm now going to trigger it using the Impero Control MIDI controller, which we will talk about in the near future. So, looking at our Impero and pressing the edit button, you'll see that I've used pretty much all of the blocks that are available to us, short of NR noise reduction and the cabinet block. So instead of going through them in a line and telling you what I'm doing, I'm just going to go in what are for me logical blocks, so gain EQ, modulation and time based blocks. So I'm going to start by turning them all off, which I can do by tapping each one of them and then tapping the on button, which turns into off button. Well, not button, screen thingy, you know what I mean. Uh, and we can go from here. Okay, so I'm going to start the loop and let's go through the boxes amp first. So if I go to the amp block, press edit, you can see that I'm using acoustic preamp one. The sound you're listening to right now is the direct sound from the seagull with everything else in bypass. I'm now going to turn the amp simulation on. And you can hear a slight difference. I've, what I was trying to achieve with this was cutting down on the high shrillness a bit and carve out a little hole in the mid frequencies where you can put a voice in or a lead guitar. Of course it's going to be a lead guitar, it's never going to be a voice. So let's compare. Off. And on. So this is the amp lock. Next, what I did, because I'm a bit of a dynamically challenged player, i.e. my dynamics are all over the place, I tried to get a bit of a compressor on just to stabilize everything. And I did that with the squeezer, which I'm going to turn on. I'm sitting on a average threshold of 45, I have a very high compression ratio, so I'm, I'm almost on the limiter side of things. A uh, very low output, because compressors make everything louder and therefore it sounds better. No, it isn't necessarily always better, so always check your output against it. Uh, relatively fast attack, because I need to control those dynamics. And I'm pushing the tone up a bit, because compressors tend to dull everything down. And I'm using a blend of 80% processed sound to 20% dry sound. It suits the thing. So once again, off. And on. So you can hear it controlling dynamics a bit more. Next on the chain, I want to look for an EQ block so that I could scoop out a bit of the boominess of the body. So, and I did it with this block. So lower a bit on 125, bit on 400, just uh, because when you're trying to get into a mix or in a band situation or something, you don't want your guitar to be too boomy because otherwise the bass player gets a bit annoyed at you. So, you know, just control it. Going back to effects, um, oh, effects three. Hot tone, call this the acoustic refiner. And I'm going to go to edit and turn it on so you can see what it's doing. You know that boominess that I was trying to take out? I also want a bit of that just to increase the apparent size of the body of the guitar. It's kind of what this does. Bit of a V-shape, bit of more bass. There we go. And that pretty much does it for all of the gain and EQ blocks. The Hotton Impero does have a few simulations on the cap side, and you can see them here, like Jumbo, um, oops, sorry, Jumbo Orchestral Dreadnought. Honestly, 
I don't think this is a strong suit of the Impero, and this guitar doesn't need them. So your mileage may vary. If you have a guitar with a slightly crappier pickup and preamp, these might work for you. They didn't in this case, so I just skipped it all together. What I did do, because I'm a bit of a sucker for chorus on guitars, yes, I'm a child of the 80s, even though I was born late 70s. So I brought in a chorus. It's a bit much, I understand. So I'm going to tone it down a bit just for you. There you go, happier. So I'm going to save this again, just so I don't lose it. Go back to edit. And yes, it's fine. If you don't want the chorus, you can take it out. I'm going to leave it in just because it widens the spectrum. And finally, on the time-based effects, we've got reverb. Everybody needs space. Everybody needs reverb. Reverb is good. So I'm using Hall with relatively average things, relatively long decay. Nice mix because, hey, I can, so I'm going to. And finally, delay module. Just for a bit more space, you know. It's fun. I'm syncing it to the BPM of this loop, which I've already tapped in on the looper module thingy. Uh, I'm having a very low mix, zero feedback, so basically I just want kind of a, a slap, a slap back in dotted eight. I'm going to turn it off and on. And you definitely hear it when it's not there. So I hope this video was useful to you in figuring out what the Impero can do for you with an acoustic guitar. Many thanks to the Hot Tone people who lent me the Impero, and same for the Seagull people who also lent me the Seagull. Enormous thanks to all of the people who've bought me coffees so far, you are helping keeping the lights on. I will have links in the description and the comments for both of these things. Um, there are going to be affiliate links for Tommen if you want to buy either an Impero or a Seagull or anything else you are helping the channel every time you click those links. So I will see you in the next one.